Thanks for staying with us on News Hub. It's a very hot, very, very, very hot Monday morning. And the reason is not because it's just holiday for you, but it's very important that as a nation, we come together to Georgia and see the way forward in all aspects of our national life right now. The next topic is on the one that's been uh, an issue in the country. For, let me say all along, but since 2014, it's taken a different dimension. And 2020 has seen it really take on another dimension. And so this morning we're taking a look at the uh, uh, taking rebuilding the nation and another look at the security architecture uh, in the country. Still with us, we have uh, Opunabo in Kotaria who's joining us uh, uh, virtually this morning. Oh, I beg your pardon, Charles in Kotaria who's joining us uh, virtually as well as uh, Dennis Amakri, former Deputy Director DSS that joined us this morning to do justice to this topic. All right, let, let's start with uh, Dennis Amakri. Once again, it's so nice to have you on News Hub. And uh, we've had it several on this program this year. And most of the times we talk about the security architecture of the country from uh, banditry to terrorism to uh, killings here and there. Uh, 2020 for you, how would you, uh, it, your review of the year 2020 in terms of security in Nigeria? Well, the, thank you for having me uh, this morning. Um, when you look at the uh, year 2020 and Nigeria, you see that uh, the country was inundated on all sides. Uh, by um, all kinds of security threats, what we call security threats. And um, it, was, uh, it was a very bad year because um, while our military were engaged in the Northeast, um, we also have uh, other things happening within the country that even brought them inside. So uh, when we look at uh, the year 2020, starting from February this year to the end of uh, the year, it was something that um, we pray will never happen again. Um, I don't know if you want me to go into those problems that uh, uh, we encountered. Very well. Please go ahead, Dennis. Okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, when you look at the year, uh, you can segment it into three parts, three parts. The post-COVID-19 uh, period, and then, of course, the COVID-19 period, and then, of course, the post-lockdown. Uh, uh, because we had um, a very, very rough year, starting with the post-COVID-19 period. Now, when you look at the post-COVID-19 period, it's like a normal, normal trend. A normal trend was going on. Uh, we have the normal criminal uh, uh, activities like kidnapping, uh, farmers and herders clash, and of course, uh, cult killings and uh, other kinds of uh, uh, criminal activities that are going on. Then, the, now, number one, we were not prepared for this uh, COVID thing because we actually heard about it, but we never did anything about it until... Um, February, when we, we thought that it was something that is going to happen in China or America or somewhere, but it crept on us. And when it crept on us, it took everybody by surprise. And, and then, of course, our government reacted, uh, reacted uh, very, very uh, uh, inappropriately, should I say, because uh, what happened was that we jumped into a total lockdown. And when you jump into a total lockdown without looking at the economics of uh, a total lockdown, then it brings a big problem. Because when you look at some of the people that are in the country, they are people of sustenance level, people who earn their money on a daily basis. Now, when you lock them down and you don't have any provision for them, then you are cutting problem. So it is that kind of situation that we find ourselves. And then we went in there, and during the post uh, the COVID period, there was a decrease in crime. Actually, there was a decrease in crime, but suddenly we realized that um, there was also an increase in domestic 
violence. I don't think there's a domestic violence. Rape cases were all over the places. And then, of course, a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people lost their jobs during that period. Now, at the post-lockdown period, I think uh, it was forced because government didn't actually come down to say, okay, let us ease it. But uh, it crept into the NSAS, NSAS situation where, um, of course, the lockdown was not even served. Everybody came out. Uh, some people were not even wearing masks. And uh, it was like the, 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 post, uh, COVID, or the COVID period was forgotten. But when we entered into this NSAS thing, a new crime came into place where arson, uh, burning down of uh, um, uh, police stations, killing of police people. You know, that was a real bad period in our country where the citizens are going after the law enforcement and security agencies. And uh, it was a very, very bad one. So um, that generally is what uh, the, 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 the year has been for us. And then, of course, we have uh, the, the militancy in the Niger Delta. Uh, many people don't understand because they were busy with kidnapping and banditry going on all over the uh, country. But there was militancy where Nigeria was losing about 100,000 barrels of oil a day. You know, so this is generally what we encounter during the year. Mm, mm. Very, very easy, easy on the air. Um, um, very easy on the air if you ask a number of people on, of, uh, on how this has gone, uh, Dennis Amakri. But, but you know, something also, as we were talking, I was just thinking about it. You know, th three times this year, the National Assembly passed a vote of no confidence on the security, on the service chiefs, and asked for their removal. And all, all, at all the, all the times you've had the president uh, rebuff them and not go ahead uh, to change the service uh, chiefs. More than 30 states in this country now have military personnel of some in some function or the other, trying to enforce uh, security in, in the states together with the police, which is, which is abnormal, I'm sure, in your opinion. Having laid down you know, the different um, periods we've had this year and how the security challenges have helped shape you know, who we are, every successive year, we sort of have um, this sort of discussion and know that um, the next year will be worse than the, the year before in how the security challenges have overwhelmed our security forces. Are you surprised that you, we still have the service chiefs and the Inspector General of Police still in play, uh, despite the avalanche of um, crimes going on in the country presently? I would uh, say that when you do something uh, the same way over and over and over for a long time, uh, and you are, you are not getting the desired result, then you have to sit back and then, of course, uh, do it differently. And uh, now, um, a lot of people have been calling for the service. Personally, I don't think that uh, that will even uh, be the solution to the problem. Uh, it might not be the solution to our problem because um, the service chiefs are just uh, three of them, or should I say four of them uh, the Army, Navy, and the Air Force, and then, of course, the Chief of Defense. Um, yes, in their own uh, sector, it becomes a problem where there is a problem of succession. Succession. You know, because in the military, it's a disciplined organization with a succession plan. You know, and if you delay or short circuit succession plan, it causes a ripple all the way down. And that is something that the military themselves should look at. Because right now, even if you remove them and then appoint new service uh, chiefs, those service chiefs are also due for retirement immediately because some of them, the next set behind them, are due for retirement. So this is what we are going to be worried about. The real problem, the real issue, is the issue of equipment, funding, funding of the military and security forces equipment, getting them brand new equipment and state-of-the-art equipment, and then, of course, training. You have to train them a lot. And then, of course, that's something many people don't understand. We are going to recruit, massive recruitment, aggressive one, 
So that, you know, our military is voluntary right now. It's voluntary, people going there. But, but if we are facing a war, we've not gone into where they will conscript people into the military. But what we need now is the massive and aggressive uh, recruitment. And I, I can tell you, if the military say, yes, they want to increase their numbers, they can because people will volunteer, okay? People will volunteer. And we need that because I tell you, the whole police, military, army, navy, air force, custom, immigration, DSS, uh, NSCDC, all of them, they are not up to one million. Mm -hmm. One million okay. securing a population of 200 million people. You know, so this is something you have to look at. You know, the police, the police in uh, in uh, in Cairo, which is uh, next to us in population, is that they have about 800 police policemen or so. Or, now, why are we still hanging around with uh, 300 and something thousand, thousand. police people? You know, right. so these are. They, they have to review the structure of what we are doing. All right, Denise Amaka, we will come to that, and I'm sure you're up to the task. Let's stay, uh, go straight to Port Harcourt now and join uh, a crusader of citizens' participation in safety and security of lives and property. Uh, that's Charles in Kotaria. Charles, compliments of the season. Thanks for joining us on News Hub today. All right, Dennis has much. spoken about Thank what you. government has been doing and perhaps some other things they're yet to do and which they're supposed to do. You are a crusader for people around. Let's talk about the citizens at this point in time. 2020, how do you think the citizens have fared in supporting the government in tackling insecurity in the country, especially you? Yeah, uh, for us as individuals, you know, we do our best, you know, to support where necessary. But you see, the security architecture is faulty, especially with this um, COVID-19 lockdown period where you see people come out, you hear of the one million boys in Lagos, you know, that have to move to people's houses with uh, ATM machine, ATM uh, POS card uh, machines, you know, to extort people and uh, rob people at night and so on, you know, and uh, deployment of arms within that period under human cargo, uh, human ca human movements, you know, breaking of uh, the lockdowns and so on of different states. It shows the gap between the people and the security structure. And now I tend to differ a little from Denny's uh, submission about equipment because we are looking at more of um, uh, a, a, a re-engineering of the security architecture to, to demilitarize the zone, because the entire environment is over-militarized. Looking at your analysis earlier, that uh, uh, nearly 30 states uh, have military presence in their various states and so on, that is really obnoxious. It is something that we need to rethink. And so when we begin to look at bringing more equipment and so on, which is very fine to equip our military, but you understand with me that military options cannot give the required results we are looking at for. And uh, the people, the security need to center more on people-based intelligence. An intelligence that will be able to fast track real-time happenings around the area. You will use lesser security people and lesser security options. You, when you begin to over militarize the zone, you begin to you continue to put tension and fear. You begin to put gap between the people and the security agents. Now, security communities will sleep, and uh, maybe the wee hours of the morning, you see bandits numbering 15, 17 with hams will come, do killing, and sack communities and so on, making the people you know helpless in their environment. It is it is outdated. It is analog in the security operations. And so we are looking at a situation where people can be properly institutionalized in the security structure. Where we're looking, when we talk of institutionalization of the people in the security structure, we are not saying vigilante, like what is obtainable by and uh, the police is trying to regularize. 
we are not talking of uh, civilian JTF that carry arms to support the military and security in combating crime. We are looking at integrating the entire public, the 200 million Nigerians, into the security architecture by coming up with a more strategized, institutionalized platform that will anchor at the center, that will checkmate activities and excesses of security. This will help to foster and rebuild trust between the people and the security agents. Until you're able to get that right, even if you buy firefighter, yeah, fighter jet for every military officer to fly and uh, combat crime, you cannot get it right. The bandit at the far north is, is uh, capitalizing on the fact that the uh, capitalizing on the gap between the people and the security agents by even gaining allegiance from the communities and operate within that community, where even security agents are not even fish out information from the community. It shows the gap between the people and the security agents. Look at the NSAS period, where military and police so officers Charles were Gutaria, being attacked. I'm sorry, I'll have to interrupt you briefly. We'll go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our discussions around rebuilding Nigeria security. The fight against COVID-19 is far from over. We are presently in the community transmission phase. Unfortunately, this is the most deadly part of its spread, and it's more prevalent in high-density areas. Don't become a statistic. Wash your hands frequently with soap and running water, or use a hand sanitizer, and remember to practice physical distancing at all times and avoid crowded places. But if you have no choice, you have the choice of wearing a face mask. Remember, it's not over till it's really over. This is a message from the Silverbird Group documentaries, news reports from around the globe, and original news content. Now available 24 hours daily on Star Times Channel 109. Stream live on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Silverbird N24 Live. Follow on Facebook at Silverbird News 24, on Twitter at Silverbird N24, and on Instagram at Silverbird N24. Silverbird News 24, the news never stops. Well, welcome back. And um, discussions we're having around the nation's security in our different locations, Port Harcourt, Abuja, and uh, Lagos. Remember that you can join the discussion, continue the conversation with us online, on Twitter, follow us, like us, put your comments at Silverbird N24, hashtag News Hub. Uh, before we took a break, we're talking with um, Charles Ngotaria in Port Harcourt, and um, just to make his uh, point, but we understand that Charles Nkutare is offline, and so we'll stay with um, uh, Dennis Amakri, former assistant director, uh, DSS. Right. So, uh, Mr. Amakri, I'm sure that uh, you probably have your jota out, and you're looking at the things that you probably will say are uh, the parts for the points for us to think ahead in 2021 for the security challenge we're facing, and also opportunities in how to make make things uh, better. From the top of your heart, yeah. from, of, from the top of your head, if you're if, going to, if you ask what you think will be the, the major security challenge that we need to watch out for and um, nip, well, nipping at the bud, I guess, is uh, trite and banal now, since most of most of the things have already happened before uh, now. But what, what would you think it will be uh, the, the, the most potent security challenge heading into 2021? Well, uh, it's a complicated issue. Is a complicated issue, such a way that uh, there are no, uh, is, there are no, there is no major issue that you will take off and then say, let us deal with this. But uh, you can actually start start by doing a short term review, a medium term, and then of course uh, a long term, a long term review. So in short term, of course, um, we have to involve everybody. That is for sure because. Um, you see, most Nigerians always look at the security uh, uh, personnel and think that uh, they are supposed to do it. Uh, I keep on saying this. Uh, during the Civil War, there is what we call uh, win the war. And win the war is uh, to involve every citizen. Every citizen. You know, you must be part of the war. 
And that is the same thing that we'll do here. Every Nigerian is a security personnel, like I've mentioned to you before. It is not um, a situation of only the security people taking a, a, a charge. So all individuals, all individuals must be organized and then, of course, be security conscious. They must be security aware. And then, of course, uh, we have to organize our neighborhoods. Uh, that means if we have, uh, 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 if we live on the street, the street themselves should come and sit down and then, of course, suggest how to pro uh, protect themselves. Uh, if we live in a city, the city itself should also, or town, should have a town hall meeting and then, of course, bring in security ideas. Uh, estates are doing that, you know. Housing estates, you have people, um, some people, some states are creating vigilante. I like what uh, Governor Zulu of uh, Borno State has just done now. Uh, it's involving uh, the forest guards or they've introduced the forest guards who are going to go out there and take care of the forest. Because when you come to think about it, who are these bandits? These bandits are ordinary people like these guys who went in there, carried arms, and then harassing everybody. So we have to take the war or whatever uh, battle to them and then deal with them. Then, of course, after you finish with the individual, you look at the security agencies themselves. You know, the security agencies and law enforcement people have a lot, a lot to do in this new year because um, we cannot continue doing it the way we have been doing it we will not get a, a different result so um they have to restructure and re-strategize this is very very key we have to re-strategize and then of course we have to sit back our lawmakers should sit back and think do we what is the kind of police that we desire are we going to have a state police or are we going to still maintain the unitary police system that we got from the British? So state police is something, a way to go after. Uh, some regions are going with Amoteku, Hizba, and all the rest. Is that the way we want to go? We have to all sit back and decide which area we want to go with uh, that kind of uh, situation. Then, of course, because of the use of arms, all the crimes in Nigeria are fueled by, by all kinds of um, weapons. So we have the proliferation of small arms and weapons all over the country. 30% of, 80% uh, of all the arms in West Africa are in Nigeria, the illegal ones. So what do we do about it? We can, we can decide to mop it up. We can decide to give a what uh, mouth-watering uh, uh, kind of incentive for people, you know, to go ahead and then bring out the arms they have. I know it will be very, very difficult, uh, but if they pursue it, at least we'll get a lot. Um, you remember what happened during the militancy and amnesty program. So we also want to look at the kind of armed forces that we want. You know, um, are they the ones that are going to be involved in internal security or they are supposed to be working around to protect the territorial integrity of Nigeria? So these are the things that we'll look at because we have a conglomeration of security threats and we cannot actually pick one out and address it. So what we will do is go back to the drawing board, look at that, our architecture, and then, of course, restructure, review, and re-strategize. Okay. All right. All right, Dennis Amakri. Let, let, let's go back to uh, Charles and Kotaria and talk about the fact that, uh, just as you mentioned earlier on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, plus even the hashtag NSAS protests, uh, you know, brought about massive insecurity across the country. Not only because, I mean, people were able to go out and some people hijacked it, but also because uh, the police was attacked across board. 
Uh, so many police stations raced down, some, secret, so some of our police personnel killed, some arms and ammunition, you know, stolen, as we speak, in the, hand, in the very wrong hands in the country. And the, the House of Representatives in November, while deliberating on the on security budget, especially for the police, did mention that 449 billion naira in the 2021 budget and marked to fund the police uh, for policing the country is so, so inadequate. How do you see the plan to fund the, the police in the coming year uh, affecting how they can perform, bearing in mind that the, the, the force is still trying to get out of the effects of the hijack of NSAS protests in the country? Yeah, policing, uh, like uh, we've always say, is a um, broad uh project it's something it's not just for the nigerian police it's only uh it, it covers the entire public you know and so budgeting in that direction must be very efficient and uh, realistic to accommodate the challenges we face but having said that like i want to support what denisa macri was saying about reforms in the security structure in the country uh, like you confirmed earlier that uh, uh, during the NSAS pro protest, there is a lot of arms in the hands of uh, the public, you know, uh, a lot of ammunition, a lot of activities, proliferation of firearms, you know, in the communities. And so for you to properly mop up the proliferation of firearms, you need the collaboration of the people to genuinely mop out the arms that is in proliferation within the community. Without the people participation, there is no successful mob up arms project you can have. Like the, the Niger Delta militants arms mob up period, it was financially induced with over billions of nairas and so on. And I think the country cannot go to that direction. The, rather, you look at integrating the people into the security structure of the country. By integration, we're looking at this federal government need to come up with laws you know, that will create uh, institutions that will facilitate this process while states need to domesticate those laws according to their peculiar challenges and allow the states and the federal government fast track the administration and the uh, facilitation of that process while the police help in supervising and monitoring the activities and also anchor the synergy between the community and the security agents. The intelligence group, intelligence community, the army and the rest will share the uh, uh, data together because the, the people participation we're talking of is non-kinetic approach. It has nothing to do with harms and ammunition. It has to do with real-time intelligence tracking within the communities to enhance robust information sharing portal between the security and the people. So that when things are happening, you have more preemptive uh, approach and uh, early warning signs and signals. You mop it up, you nip it on the board before it, it even happens. Because the, 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 area, the idea of combating crime is creating so much uh, casualties and victims of violence within our territory and the communities. So we cannot afford that combating, you know, reacting to crime or uh, criminal activities than to look out for proper and preemptive approach so that we'll be able to reduce the number of casualties and victims to violent crossfires within our communities. So we are saying that there should be proper institutionalized platform. Not this community policing has been uh, carried out by the IGP because what they're trying to do is basically to institutionalize a vigilante, get group of people within communities that will be working with the police to combat crime. I say that is far from people integration. People integration has to do with the 200 million Nigerians, where every household will have what we call security warding. The security wardings are the people that facilitate security activities within that particular compound and building. Now, the security the government the state and the federal government will recruit certain group of young men and women within the areas that will facilitate this integration process, identify and map out areas, you know, that has to do with the security integration. 
and educate the people on what they need to do when they come across violent or criminal or suspicious activities. That's what we call volunteer information system, PIS. It's a portal that the entire the federal government can come up with and do a toll-free, you know, uh, uh, help for the every citizen. Nearly everybody in Nigeria have a GSM phone. And so if that kind of help is effective and the community work with it and the people are properly, you know, uh, institutionalized, you know, and you see proper efficient security in uh, security within our territory that is non-kinetic because this over militarization of the area is also increasing the level of banditry a level of you know gun running and uh, uh, violent activities within the area so we are saying that citizen participation is the only option the country have even if you go and buy arms, you buy everything, equip the military, change service chiefs, you cannot get the result that is needed. Other than integrating the people, the citizens need to be part participants. Like the earlier speaker just said, we have less than one million security officers within the country, police, army, and everything. Securing 200 million Nigerians, you know that this is laughable. And so until you maximize the strength the number 200 million is a, is a solid number that can flush out insecurity and that can combat this insecurity in our land through efficient and intelligence gathering, you know, within the area and synergy with the security agents. You understand there's no trust, there's no collaboration. We look at the NSAS, policemen were attacked in communities and nobody talk. Nobody, they don't have a structure in the community that is collaborating with the security structure that will be a sucker to situations like that. The everybody policemen will remove their uniform and run, and the community there is no participation right. in that area. There are communities all, all, all right, all, all right, uh, Mr. Like, Kutare. Um, this sits, sits nicely as we try to bring the discussion to a close. Uh, with Dennis Amakri here. Uh, Dennis, uh, I just will pivot from what Charles has talked about. One of the big discussions we've had this year was, has been around the police and the uh, entire answers, protests, the agitations, uh, public angst against exactly what the police had uh, become to a number of people and in states. And you saw all of that crystallize in, in, the, in the protests and then the routes that happened afterwards where a number of police stations were burnt. They say that the day show, the night shows itself from the day. And um, I'm sure you've been following the discussions on the sort of police uh, that represents the every Nigerian uh, on the street. What have you seen so far going into 2021 that assures you or frustrates you whether the police has changed for the better? Well, um, if we look at the police structure itself, um, there is a lot of uh, uh, promotions going on. And then, of course, uh, retirement is going on. And then uh, SWAT is being trained, uh, although it's not exactly the kind of SWAT that uh, I have been recommending. Uh, but I think uh, they will grow to that. I believe so. Because uh, what we are actually trying to train when we say SWAT is an anti-terrorism squad, anti-terrorism squad that will take care of either uh, uh, violent crimes or terrorist uh, takeover. Um, for instance, uh, if there is a hijack of the plane in the airport right now, uh, who goes there? And then, of course, who we, we, we brings it down? Uh, if there is a kidnap case, high-profile kidnap situations, how do we get them out? You know, So that's what we're saying, that the police itself have to restructure, re-strategize uh, their system. Are we, are, we, are we very comfortable with the kind of uh, police we have in Nigeria? No, we are not. So what do we want to do? We want to look at state policing, or we want to look at neighborhood watches, or we want to look at uh, the Amoteku kind of thing. At the same time, you know, heavy security awareness program should be run through the country so that everybody realizes that they are a police person. You know, everybody is a policeman. You know, I remember when uh, Umaru Jiko, former minister, was 
brought in from London, uh, was about to be brought in from London. That operation was busted by an old woman who sat in her kitchen and saw, and saw some people bundling a man into a car. And she called the police, you know. So these are the kinds of things that we want um, to happen in Nigeria. And um, if I think uh, they involve everybody in the country, we should be able to uh, have a better society. But right now, if we allow the police to All go, right, we'll have to leave it as that. Thank you very and much. They are not going to go in trouble. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure speaking with uh, Dennis Amakri, former assistant director, uh, SSS. Great, great. And do have yourself a happy holiday. Uh, also to Charles and Kotaria, great speaking with you, security analyst, a, ple a pleasure speaking with you always. And happy holidays to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, uh, that's the show. I mean, securing the land borders. Uh, by the Army, the airspace, by the Air Force, waterways, by the Navy, the police doing what they have to do within the customs, the immigration, the uh, civil defense, everyone. And you and I, we all have a role to play in ensuring that we have a secure nation. Very, very important. And that's what we're looking forward to uh, in the year 2021, beginning from today. So if you have any information, please provide them to I leave them to appropriate authorities so that we can get our country going on. I wish you a very wonderful 2021 secure one. <laughs> oh, okay, I know that traditionally, is this traditional drum meant to secure the country? It's talking drum. What do you say? I, I interpret. Say again. All right. So once thank you for being part of the show. So it's okay. And we invite you to join us again tomorrow for another edition. So on behalf of the entire crew, uh huh. I'm sure we did you have a beautiful day. And I am our Obo. Sayonara. Well, I've been singing, I'll be dancing, and you'll be fine.